International Phonetic Alphabet, which is created by the International Phonetic Association, is a set of standardized symbols that can be used to transcribe in writing all the languages of the world. So this alphabet contains uh, different charts for consonants, for vowels, etc. If you don't already know where he could get this chart, Okay, if you go to the website of the International Phonetic Association, from internationalphoneticassociation.org, org, so you can go here, go to the alphabet part, full IPA chart, then here you can download the latest version. If you go to the consonant chart, the consonant table, you will see that we have these um, different manners of articulation on the left uh, listed. We have sounds across every row, and uh, which begins with the title of the manner of articulation, plosive, nasal, trill. If you're just coming across this chart, or just for the first time start using a dictionary, it's like you're a language learner, or you want to be a polyglot, or you just want to know how to use a dictionary, you, you may come up with these terms so in this video you can learn about what the word plosive means so i'm going to clarify these rows of symbols in the consonant chart he today i'm going to do plosives once you hear the word you might associate it with the word explosion and that's not actually a bad association it's actually the word is related for it and once i describe this you will see how some linguists instead of plosive use the word stop i'm going to clarify the word stop later but these are basically consonants in which the vocal tract is blocked to obstruct the airflow followed by a sudden release for example the first plosive that you see in the chart is pa as you can see you you obstruct the airflow using your lips and then you release it suddenly which is explosive. The blocking or occlusion, that's a more technical term, or stricture can be made with the tongue tip, tongue blade, or tongue body, the lips, or the glottis. So you can use any of these articulators to create the occlusion or blocking or stricture. The tongue tip or blade are used for producing the plosives ta and da. So you can see that when you're articulating these sounds, the sound ta and da, you're using the tip or blade of your tongue. The tongue body, on the other hand, is used for producing ka and ga because that's further back in the mouth, as you can see in the chart. And here, the body, not the tip or blade, are in, is engaged with the velum, creating the, the velar sounds ka and ga. Again, for, for the, the sounds pa and ba, the lips are engaged. And there is a sound called the glottal stop or the glottal plosive. For that, you use your glottis. To understand plosives, you can understand it in the bigger context of comparing them with other manners of articulation that are closely similar. For example, plosives and nasals. Plosives and nasals. The similarity is that in both of them the air, the oral tract is blocked. For example, if you look at the first nasal, which is ma, compare it to pa. You would see that the position of your lips for pa and ma are are exactly the same. The difference between them, however, is that pa requires opening of the lips for the release, but for ma you don't need to open it. Mm, the release is happening through your nasal cavity. This is why a nasal is not plosive, it's not instant. It can actually be pronounced continuously. Mm. You know when you have cold and your nasal cavity is partially blocked? When you use words uh, in which you have ma, they may sound like ba. For example, you see what I say, my mother, my mother. It kind of sounds like by mother. So that's a comparison with nasals. There's something else with which you can compare the plosives and that's the fricatives. So the oral tract is totally blocked during the production of the plosives. During the articulation of fricatives, however, the oral tract is partially open, allowing airflow to continue to go out. If you pronounce the word pa in a fricative way, you will come up with this sound, which is actually 
common in Japanese, I think, which is like h Fuji. So Fuji. Put your lips in the position for saying p, but then open your lips slightly to allow continuous airflow to go through. So the interesting thing is, if you pronounce d, d, if you make d instead of plosive release, you allow for continuous fricative release. You will end up saying z. So instead of d, it says z, and the same happens for t and s. T, s. Back to plosives. The closure or blockage of airflow in plosives is suddenly released. The air pressure buildup behind the closure at the place of articulation rushes out with an explosive sound. Hence the term plosive. So the term plosive is related to explosion. The term plosion is used to refer to the outward movement of air upon release. The plosives of English are pa, ba, ta, da, ka, ga, and the glottal stop. These other plosives do not exist in English. They exist in other languages. Some phonetations instead of plosive use the word stop, and they actually use it interchangeably for, with plosives. However. Stops are the manner of articulation involving a complete closure in the vocal tract, which can include oral stops, which are plosives, as well as nasal stops, which are nasals. If um, nasals could technically include uh, the nasal stops, not just plosives. Mm -hmm.